Finally, I'm in Gloucester during the Schooner Festival. Finally, I had never been to this remarkable gathering of boats before. I came especially for a special sail aboard Ardell to benefit shipwright David Short and his family as they were facing his late stage cancer and all the challenges it comes with. I bought two tickets and invited Andrew Guest of Restoring Rosalind along with me. Isabella, built in 2005, and Ardell, built in 2010 and 11, are schooners that Harold Burnham built at his boatyard in Essex, Massachusetts, where his family has been building boats for generations. Isabella just came into his possession about a year previously after serving her family as a cruising boat, and both schooners are now working from the maritime Gloucester dock, giving harbor tours nearly every day in the summertime. Day sails are repetitive, tiring work. The few times I've crewed or cooked aboard a passenger schooner, the real reward for me was seeing people absolutely enthralled by how the boat works and how familiar places look brand new from the water. But there's always that pressure of business and no one gets rich in this one. It's necessary to sell enough tickets on every sale to make crew payroll and to pay for fuel and maintenance. Promote with all your heart, hope the guests come and that they tip well. That's all you can hope for. It's like fishing, but a little different, I suppose. Oh, good to see you. <laughs> good to see you. How's he got coming? Come on. Uh, Harold ran this trip along with his wife and business good manager. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good. I've been loving your stuff. Thank you. And it's so cool to see. Thank it's you. like a real boat. Yeah, it's getting there. Yeah. It's getting very It's close. really exciting when it's almost a real boat. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Seeing as I have most of a keel. Um, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> so... And right away, I could tell it was mostly family and friends of David Short aboard. Though I had bought a ticket, as most of them did, it was clear that we were a party to something really special this day. Ardell is over 60 feet in length, and she can take 49 people. Isabella is a little over 40 feet in length, and she can take 12. Uh, Captain Amanda here over on Isabella backed her out of the slip like an absolute champion. It was really fun to watch. After loading all of the passengers onto Ardell, we made our way out of the dock, but before we came too far away from the slip, something fetched up on the propeller. I could hear Harold remarking that steerage was difficult and that the engine wasn't delivering the power he'd expected. And uh, here's where Harold pulled out his first incredible act of the day. This is the world's best no parking sign. <laughs> Right. He remembered that there had been crew cleaning the bottom and that they likely left a line tied under the boat to aid them. And um, it was likely that he would have to dive on the propeller. After hobbling into the dock again with the limited steering, it was all business. He put on his swim shorts, put on his fins, and he put on his scuba gear. Forwards and backwards. Yep. Yeah. Unwinding a prop is no good. Yeah. And sure enough, running the engine for just that long had fused the rope into a melted disc of plastic. That's the rope. Is that because of the way it's rigged? It was, and then Now we were on our way in earnest, and we did what we came to do. Schooner Ernestina Morrissey, fresh from her restoration at Bristol Marine in Booth Bay Harbor, was coming into Gloucester for the first time 
since seven years of work had been buttoned. David, a shipwright responsible for restoring many famous boats such as Letty G. Howard, Lois McClure, Oyster Dredger Ida May, American Pride, Grace Bailey, and many others, had become lead shipwright on Ernestina after Harold recommended him to the Schooner Ernestina Morrissey Association. On our way out to greet his last big endeavor, the last he'd ever be able to work on, I overheard another guest mention that David had passed just that morning, peacefully, and at home. It's a time such as these that boats become more bigger, breathing almost, testaments, visitations, proof of life, evidence of passion and special skills. This family wasn't looking at a boat. They were coming in contact with tangible evidence of David's hands. Robert Mitchell, who reported on the seven-year project for the Booth Bay Register, honored David with a lovely account of the visits he had to Bristol Marine to gather information for updates. He said of David's memorial that the gathering on the pier at Bristol Marine for David was an impressive assembly to honor his legacy and accomplishments. His work and life impacted many. His spirit will ride many oceans in the lives and vessels he has touched. Robert also quoted Andy Tiska in that article, the owner at Bristol Marine who said, from his eye to his hand, his lifelong experience with traditional wooden schooners has touched every part of Ernestina. From the mast to the keel, from the stem to the stern, there's not one thing David hasn't been involved in. From designing the spars and selecting materials to the training of the workforce, his effort ensures that this vessel will be sailing for many generations to come. This is his life's work. Ernestina was built in 1894 and served the first part of her life as a Grand Bakes fishing schooner. When the editing team worked on the three-part series for Wooden Boat Magazine, my favorite part of her story came when Cape Verdean captain Enrique Mendes bought her and sailed her as a packet between the Cape Verde Islands and the United States, bringing many immigrants to the U.S. who were looking to make a new life after World War II. There are a trio of articles 
in wind boat issues 270 through 272, covering this long and storied past, including all of the times she was brought back from the brink with repair and restoration to serve another and another generation of sailors. I hear this song of my people, the bilge pond. So this is not really. Oh yeah. Is she? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Andrew. She's honky. Did you have that? Other schooners had made their way back into the harbor at this point, and Harold cut the engine as we entered one of the many busy nooks in Gloucester for a gentle flyby of a few other boats of note, including the Lannan, which he also built. Here's where Harold pulled another incredible yeah. act. He knows the carry of Ardell so well, he cut the engine just as we entered and then made a loop in these tight quarters with no engine. It was killer boat handling that probably went unnoticed by most. Not me though, it made for a quiet visit to a few boats and didn't bother anybody who was working there. Just carrying through the water. No engine. For like three minutes. <laughs> Maybe more. They're just backwinding the jib a little to turn us around. But like, no engine at all since when we turned the corner way over there. I'm just... Isn't that special? No motor, just... I'm not over it. Makes me feel, yeah, less guilty about leaving things. <laughs> well, it's plenty strong once you, oh, yeah, once no, you fill it in, isn't it? And, totally. and it's, it is nice to see. It. Well, nice and see. just the culture of rejecting anything that even has the slightest defect. I just it, it it gets to you after a while, and that's like that's a lot of places that I've being in the U.S., like, there is that kind of, like, if there's evidence of insects of any kind, you throw the piece out, you don't, like, you don't even use part of it, um, this is great. <laughs> it's just kind of either a birth or a giant shelf, yeah. basically. Yeah.
Harsh. Uh, Harold's word is that he he fusses over the things that matter, but right, not things not, that don't. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Um, and so many people that in the business fuss over literally everything. I don't and spend um, their whole lives varnishing, and yeah, finishing and fitting, and never get to or, go sailing. I was just saying there was a, there was a deck beam that had like some some ant damage that had been filled in with epoxy and filler. Yeah. Um, and it's just like so nice to see that yeah, for yeah. me because like Completely. I've been too many places where the culture is like if there's any defect you throw it out like, yeah. um, and it really gets to you. Yeah, 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 completely. Uh, it's, it's wasteful and I'm lucky I work in a place that's like we've got like two or three yacht yachts and yeah. the rest are just kind of owners that take care of it themselves. Nice. But working on the yacht yachts gives you an appreciation for just how wasteful it can be. You know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, rejecting materials is a huge... Yeah. yeah. Well, and even, like, what species and what sources are acceptable, um, you know, things like that. You know, so, I mean, there's, there's people that literally will only work with tropicals, which is wild to me. Um, and there's folks that, um, I don't know, that definitely wouldn't put locusts in their boat. Yeah, no, um, no, we're not that much. Uh, no, it's definitely pretty fussy. Not. A lot of fussy people in the house. Oh, yeah. What can you do? That's where I'll be better. Like basically a, a ceiling and then a bench all the way around. And just access all the way around. Like your deck. Yeah. And it's just got, it's, it's not glassed sweet. over the edge. It's five eighths, I think. But, yep. Yeah. And then originally he was planning on just using this. Yeah. I think. Like stand on the engine and then get that and then go up. Yeah. <laughs> nope. <laughs> That's the plan, eh? Yeah. Noticing in the interior, Andrew. Um, just a. Just anything. It's hard to put into words, really. I don't know. Um, I appreciate the aesthetic very much. That it's a work boat, um, and that things are built for utility, um, and that there's. <laughs> to me, there's a lot of beauty in that. Um, attention has been paid to the things that matter and not to the things that don't. Um, uh, yeah, it's just incredibly solid and workmanlike and, and generally excellent, I would say. Um, yeah. Thanks, man. Absolutely. Thank you. It's nice to see you again. Thank you so much. Come sail on whenever you want. You know that. Next time, just call me. You don't have to buy tickets. You got it. This one was special. Yeah, but yeah, this is a good one. But next time, just call me. Okay. You got it. Thanks, Mary Kay. I know, but whenever, if you're ever in the neighborhood, thank you. Call the numbers. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> exactly. My first time seeing her at the dock. Oh, I was. Yeah. This really oh, right. Why don't you sail on this? I do. <laughs> I mean, like, oh my goodness. The luxury. <laughs> so every schooner should have a couch. Uh, absolutely. Every schooner should I have a couch. I think they're ready for you, Phil. It's up there. I mean, have. Uh, you want me to take them down? What's that? You want me to bring them down? or good to go. Uh, 
Yeah, just let it. Yeah, it's Phil. Phil's on board. Phil's on board. Yeah, just bring him down, and everybody will figure it out. <laughs> Phil here. about him and knows about him. He was a wonderful teacher. He taught so many people. And teacher. So many of this, you know, this field. 